no changes in the top nine. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> what do we get mad about? Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, Washington, Oregon, Texas, Alabama, and Penn State all in the exact same order. They didn't have the same week. All right. Washington was in a, a shootout against USC. Ohio State had its hands full with Rutgers. Michigan, obviously, uh, you know, absolutely put the clamps on and won handily at home. Georgia had its hands full with Missouri. Alabama took down the LSU. Texas went to overtime against Kansas State. And no changes whatsoever? I mean... What could you do? Like, I mean, because everybody kind of held serve. Maybe you could have dropped Florida State, but if you watched the game... There was a chance for Norvell to punch it in late. They could have, you know, won 31-7. It would have looked a little better. They didn't have their two top wideouts. That was something that kind of worried me, and I'll be interested to see what the committee does. But Florida, one of Florida State's better wins. Clemson beat Notre Dame, so that kind of helps them. Um, the only other, and like the only other one I was thinking about was Bama, huge win. But can you move them over Texas? Right. No. It's so it's the they're, they're Washington stuck. They're yeah, like the Washington, up. Oregon, uh, Texas, Alabama is a log jam. As yeah. long as those teams have a similar uh, similar loss count and the head-to-head -head results, it's kind of hard for anybody to jump ahead of them, kind of hard to uh, switch up that order too much. Jordan, oh, don't get excited with that question Jordan. because there's a lot more than the top eight. <laughs> okay. Further down in the rankings, Oklahoma State, which was not ranked by the AP Top 25 last week, jumps in to number 15. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Tom? I mean, it's just it's funny to me, like, I'm not mad about Oklahoma State being ranked because I'm, I'm perfectly happy with where they're ranked. It's just how much more evidence do you need that the college football playoff influences the AP poll like after it comes out? Because last week before the playoff rankings are out, Oklahoma State doesn't get enough votes to you know even crack the top 25. I think of the few voters who had them ranked, let's see, only – only one had them higher than number 20. That was Kirk Bowles, but only three people total had them ranked 20 or better. This week, everybody but three has them ranked at least 20th. Everybody's got them on their ballot. Some people have them at 11. Like 40 voters have them in the top 15. What changed? I know they beat Oklahoma, but what changed? Oh, the playoff put a number next to their no, name. So when no, people no. are filling out their ballot, when, oh, 100%. Jim, when 100%. people are filling out their ballots, they're looking at the playoff rankings. But right. it also happens because they're moving Oklahoma down and they put Oklahoma State ahead of Oklahoma. Oklahoma State has wins against Oklahoma and Kansas, teams that are currently slotted at 17 and 19. And they also have the same record, seven and two, as Oklahoma State. So it is they AP voters. It is AP vote. They didn't have the Oklahoma win. If no, AP but, voters are trying to correct their error for overlooking Oklahoma State and throwing in uh, Florida at their number 24 spot instead of having Oklahoma State there, then what they're going to do is they're going to overcorrect to try to respect those head to head wins against other top 20 teams. Uh huh. And if another team, Chip, you do the tomorrow's top 25 every single week, the team's at 26 one week and it gets another big win that week. They jump up to 15 or 16 in the rankings. They usually fit there at 20 to 25. Hey, listen, sometimes they'll jump higher if it's early in the season and, and the team they beat was ranked higher. I mean, that's it. It is a little bit of uh, I've, I've heard AP voters describe. Um, oh, so I moved them in there just to take their spot. Like you beat Oklahoma, you get their spot. I don't agree with that as a method of ranking teams, but I know that AP voters sometimes think like that. And I think that's what we have going on right there. But yes, of course, the playoff committee rankings influence it. It's literally the tiny number beside their name on television. So, mm -hmm. of course, there's some Again, influence. I have, I have no problem with it. I just think it's funny because it happens every year. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Jordan's, Jordan's not going to like this one. But does Tennessee really belong where they are? Because, my goodness, like, what's, what's the win? Texas... <laughs> I mean, what exactly you could say Texas AM exactly and it was kind of ugly it wasn't really convincing either like these are the good losses that you get benefited but I is the Florida loss is a bad loss Tennessee should be at the bottom of the two team two loss teams I think and I think Oklahoma State should be over them and I if you went by like who's I heard you guys on the uh reaction show like who's the hottest team right now I think mm -hmm. Oklahoma State might be at the top of the list but yeah, I also I think they're their resume is starting to build up too. Yeah, I, I'd have them ahead of Utah. I'd have them ahead of Tennessee. I'd 
consider putting them ahead of Oregon State too. Like I, I think the Cowboys right now are better than all those teams. But as for Tennessee, like I was talking to Jordan about this before the show. Like resume wise, you're right. It's not great. But when I when I watch Tennessee play, it really doesn't seem like that drastically drastically different the level of team is Ole Miss. It's just they have the extra loss. So it's like they get I, I don't know. Like I feel like the biggest difference is quarterback. Ole Miss has a better quarterback than Tennessee does. Therefore, they have a better record and they've won more close games. And if Tennessee had Jackson Dart, I think they'd be the one loss team in the top 10 right now. Um, Arizona, North Carolina, and Liberty all making their uh, arrivals. One of those teams is white hot and the other two moved in. <laughs> moved into absent, absent spots. Now, look. This is one thing I did want to mention about the the Wildcats. It's kind of an upon further review, but just a, a line. I I had mentioned a lot about Noah Fafita. Um, this defense has been awesome here mm -hmm. in these last couple of weeks. They it was 43-41 in the loss to USC. Next three games, all against Pac-12 opponents, all teams that were ranked at the time the game was played, 40 combined points. Washington State, Oregon State, UCLA. We've been talking about this UCLA, I mean, this Arizona program for several years now. When we jumped on them, it was almost joking. Like, they play hard, but how much of defense, going back to our very you know opening topic with Grinch, is effort, mentality, mindset, being able to go out there um, and you know put it all on the line. And the Wildcats have done a really good job there. Uh, deserving top 25 ranking after the win against the Bruins for Arizona. Six and three now overall. Uh, again, you can just tell by the voting points, Arizona way ahead of North Carolina and Liberty, North Carolina and Liberty, a little bit closer to Kansas State, Fresno State, those teams that were just on the outside of the AP top 25 poll. Are, are you guys surprised at all that Notre Dame hangs on? Because like this is this well, is a bum slaying ass team. <laughs> like They, they the, beat the hell out of bad teams, but like they lost to Ohio State. They lost to loss. Louisville. They lost to Clemson. They lost. Their best win is either a USC team, which you no longer deem being worthy of being in the top 25, or a Duke team that you no longer deem worthy of being in the top 25, and they barely won that game. And it's like you've got Brian Howell at the Daily Camera who has Notre Dame at 13th on his ballot. <laughs> Why? They got no business being there. Yeah, <laughs> not, not at all. That's There's ridiculous. no way to defend that. That is not if that's the thirteenth best team in the country, we are in a whole world of trouble. We know twelve team playoff. Notre Dame can get in. Uh oh. Fifteen. We we say it a lot. Fifteen to forty. Sometimes a little bit of a grab bag. So Notre Dame is definitely not in the top fifteen. And whether their performance is somewhere between seventeen and thirty eight, probably depends on the day. And they were certainly looking thirty eight uh, in Death Valley on Saturday afternoon.